right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at this. <laughs> now, this is on loan uh, from Mark, Tapper Surfing Games and Toys. This is a HP Stream Mini Desktop that's convert. It's been converted into a Bodicera, which is a it's a which Bodicera is a, um, a a Linux distro used for creating emulation PCs, emulation boxes. So this is a HP um, Stream Mini desktop computer. You've got two USB ports on the front, power button. You've got on the back uh, Ethernet, two more USB ports. You've got a uh, display port, port here of the box, fluffy bag, uh, HDMI here, and then you got the power and headphone jack. This is actually a perfect little PC for frame relation, especially given the, the front USB ports there. Um, this is this this has two gigabytes of, of RAM. I think he upgraded it to more, but this is what came stock with uh, two gigabytes of RAM. It's an Intel Celeron chip in here. Uh, I originally ran Windows 8, but this is by Sarah uh, Linux, so definitely not Windows. <laughs> so we got this. We got a um, a retro bit. Uh, RB UNI two two zero two. Uh, wireless controller and we've got a USB 4 port hub in case you want to connect a, a mouse and keyboard to it in addition to the controller and you've got this uh, rocket what's it called it's a rocket hang on uh, I think it's like rocket sh rocket nano it's a rocket nano drive and this is where all the games are. So let's hook this thing up <laughs> and see what we got. All right, so when you boot into the uh, Bodicear box, you're greeted with this. Um, this is every system that you could ever think of or ever want to play. Um, yeah, I mean, look at these. There's just so many choices. <laughs> now, some of these systems do not emulate well uh, or, or have graphical issues. Um, and some of them can be tricky to get out of the uh, uh, emulator. But, uh, let's take a look at Oops, I don't know what I do. I hit the wrong button. Alright, I do by Sarah. Actually I wanted to Cody. Whoops. <laughs> Not what I wanted to do. Okay, so I want there we go. Okay, so here's some games. There's some things like that. Let's take a look at uh oh let's do let's do Dare Live. There's just no sound. Try again. Nope, still no sound. Okay. Maybe let me restart the system. Power back on. Okay, so this is startup. This is from startup here. 
We're gonna start it because again, I didn't hear any sound. So today I might have to boot up. But it should. There we go. Now, for those that are wondering, it's low likely because of my TV. My TV doesn't like really anything I borrow from Mark, I swear. <laughs> Usually that, that intro is much much uh, smoother. So there's a lot of finding all the games on the drive, all the systems and everything. Here we go. Alright, I'm going to turn this down. Okay, so I'm going to Dreamcast. Try to boot up DOA 2 again. There you go, now I got sound. button that was mapped to the reset, which is A. So, gotta remember that. Hey, Dave, not the, the A button. <laughs> all fighting, and I hit the A button, and uh, it's all over. So, A button's not the button to hit. Okay. Okay. As you can see, yeah, it emulates Dreamcast really well. Oh, not well, doing too well, but I mean, obviously, there's some sound issues you can hear there, but overall, it, it, you know, it's smooth. So we're gonna hold the Start and A button. I mean, start and A. Start and A to get back out of the emulator. Nope. Back out of the game, rather. And start hold A. Okay, and then so that's some some Dreamcast. So that's some Neo Geo. Let's do some Metal Slug. And again, just like we did with the uh, <clears throat> the Pie Boy, we're gonna take a look at each system. You see how it plays on this thing. Okay, so the A button I've determined is the reset button for everything. So we're going to stop hitting that A button. Anybody that hasn't played Metal Slug, you should. This game is amazing. With the... There's no jump button. Okay. Okay, so that would, that's not mapped very well at all. You'd think the X button would be jump, but okay. We're going to move right along then. Come on. Back out. There we go. Okay. Neo Geo CD. Let's see what we got here. Let's do Far East of Eden.
I like how each emulator has like its own little um, console art on the side. Neo Geo CD. Oh, pretty cool game right here. Can't can't hit that A button. I really wish I was mapping something else. Yeah, have most emulators on this thing, it's hold start and hit A. So Solaris and RPG game engine. I guess it looks like, I guess it's kind of like a RPG maker, I guess is what it looks like. Uh, PS2. So with this particular emulator, um, PS2 does have a, a few issues, a few graphical issues that'll that'll make it so the game's unplayable. According to what I was talking to Mark about is that it'll it'll layer the background in the foreground and just completely like look graphically horrible, um, and that's a known issue with this particular emulator. It's not an issue with this box. But, uh, but yeah, the game plays just fine. Runs pretty smooth. No slowdown, no graphical issues, other than what I mentioned before. <laughs> but yeah, plays plays just fine. All right, hold on. Hey, it's starting to get out of the emulator. Sometimes with the emulators, it's actually a different button combination. I think PS2 is different. I can't recall what the button combination is now. Uh, we're just gonna restart, I think. Yep. That's what I didn't want to restart. Give me a second here. We'll restart the. Uh, Restart the emulator because I cannot get out of power back on. Okay, right, so that's sixteen gigabytes of of, of uh, RAM. It looks like there. Instead of the initial two that it came shipped with, so it's pretty cool. It was able to upgrade that much. And again, it's going to take a minute to boot.
Okay, so we have Dreamcast, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, Solaris, PS2. So we have PSP now. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at. There's God of War in here. Oh, he doesn't have God of War in here. Uh, that's unfortunate. Oh, uh, no, it's right here. Got to work with the spiral. Let's see how that plays. Not the button I wanted to hit initially. Actually, let's look at uh, Prince Olympus instead. go. Let's see how this plays here. Well, I'll say it's running pretty good. <coughs> oh yeah, I run real good. Cool. I don't know what resolution this is at. Um, I think it's on default, whatever the default is for, the, for these emulators, but uh, it's running pretty good. It's usually the the go to game for uh, for like a benchmark to see how well uh, emulation devices and systems play PSP. I mean, this is usually a pretty intensive game, and it seems to be running just fine. Just fine. Hopefully, it won't mess up the sound again. Okay, no, we're, we're good. Alright. So I'll hit MAME here. I'll see if it'll run The Simpsons. Do 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 See if it'll run. Nope. Huh. I wonder if it's an issue. I don't know. Let's see. I'll run three wonders. I'll run that. Okay. So maybe it has an issue with that. With that uh, Simpsons game there. Because it seems to run into this just fine. Cool. 
Yeah, it runs just, just fine. So I'm not sure what the uh, what the issue is with that game, but okay. Oh, this should be starting, I believe. Yep, yeah, starting. Okay. Oh, no. I'm trying to go back out. There we go. Okay, so Atari 2600. Okay, that's well, not much there. Commodore 64. Not much there either. Easy RPGs. So we had a couple of them, which is hard. And uh, IB. Okay. Tick 80. A couple of them there. Oh no. I have a feeling. Oh, okay, never mind. I was thinking it'd stop recognizing the drive, but no, it's it's right and it's just fine. Scum, we got beneath, beneath the still sky and fight for the Amazon Queen. Vectrax, well, that's kind of cool. Never played Vectrax, honestly. Ooh, Star Castle. to move. There we go. Oh. Star House is a great, a great game. I played this in the arcade back in, back I think the, the late 90s. Very challenging game. Okay, so. Come on. Went back out, thank you. So I thought it was kind of cool. We got some Windows games here. So we got X Moto, we got Tux Racer, Super Mario War, and uh, whatever that is. <laughs> so that's some Lycan games. Um, Area 51, House of the Dead, House of the Dead 2, it's kind of cool. I'm interested to see if this will actually play. Let's see what the what they'll do here. Okay, never mind. It's not playing at all. Let's see if Area 51 will play. Nope. Okay, so lightning games aren't working. PC Engine. Uh, Box Revenge. Let's check that out. And there's no jump button. There's no jump button right here. Okay. Well. Come on. I'm gonna move on here. Alright, it's like PC Engine, CD ROM. <coughs> Lots of games here. Let's go look at. Uh, let's do. Doraemon. Pretty cool platformer here. Again, the jump button mapped. So I'm not going to actually be able to jump. <laughs> Alright, so platformers are a no go. <laughs> uh, with the majority of these emulators, I think that this needs to be remapped. 
All right, so NES, let's see what we got here. Tons of games to choose from. We're gonna go ahead and just jump right into Omegon. Not that there's gonna be a way for me to jump in this, but still a great game. Let's see. Nope. Terrible. So, yeah, so definitely it's some remapping. It's a great game, though, here. Okay. Alright, so that was Amagon on NES. Let's go look at Game Boy. Uh, let's see. Bubble Ghost is pretty open. Oh, Bubble Ghost. We'll call it Bubble Ghost. Bubble Ghost is pretty cool. Bubble Ghost is a pretty cool game. But what would normally be the button to blow the bubble is the A button, which is the reset button. So we're going to... Um, not worry about that one. I want to move on. So I'm actually going to show you a game that's uh, not, not a platformer, because obviously we can't do platformers, because... Every platformer requires the A button, and the A button's the reset button. Let's look at the arrow fighters. It doesn't involve the A button, I hope. I mean, I know I'm not making fun here, but I mean, this is a pretty decent system. And if you can, if I knew how to remap the controls, it definitely would, so it'd be a bit, uh, a bit more playable <laughs> with most of these games. Uh, but let's see. Okay, so yeah, I don't need the uh, A button here, so that's good. Yeah, it plays our fighters just fine. I mean, I find that most of these games are going to play just fine on this box. Okay. Ah, oh, hit the wrong button again. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, Virtual Boy. So, we we'll take a look at. Uh, let's look at. So, at Tetris, because that doesn't require the A button, I don't think. No, that's a decent. It's a, it's a decent Tetris game too. See if I can. There we go. So, a pretty decent Tetris game here. I show you Wario Land, which is like my favorite Game Boy or favorite Virtual Boy game ever, but uh, that A button can't use it. <laughs> so 
But I think it's pretty cool when you get on the uh, Virtual Boy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and back out of that. All right, N64. Let's look at uh, let's look at Goldeneye. No, actually, let's, let's look at let's look at Cruising USA. Actually, because this is a game that's relatively um, hard to uh, emulate. with most systems. But it looks like it's working just fine. Okay, interesting. So yeah, it works just fine. Cool. Awesome. Plays real smooth. No slowdown that I'm noticing. Cool. Oh hey, the A button actually the A button actually doesn't reset in this one. But that's because also it's not the button got me sure to get out either. Uh, okay, I found them I can't get out of. Yeah, I can't get out of this one. So, um, I guess I'll just end the review here, guys, of this box. I mean, we're going on, you know, nearly a half hour at this point. Um, would I recommend getting this and turning it in, into an emulation box? Yeah, I would definitely say it's a decent, a decent box to get if you want to get an emulation box. It's small, compact, doesn't have a whole lot of space, and pretty much emulates everything you could ever want to emulate, and it emulates well. And just be sure to map the <laughs> the controller correctly, and you shouldn't have an issue. Um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely would would recommend this to anybody that is looking to get a to get a decent um, box for emulations, to emulate everything you want to emulate, uh, and it does so really well. So. Uh, I thank Mark for the opportunity to this, uh, this, uh, this simulation box. Pretty neat, pretty awesome. Have a lot of fun with it. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, till next time. And take care and happy gaming.